And he's not here. Leo stabs the doorbell again, frustration etched across his face. I shift the red velvet cake in my grasp, trying to hold it, hold both it and the lucha figurine. Yeah, I have no idea where they got this. I'm sure it's like trash, like they said like McDonald's apple pie. Or they whatever said the drive through, but maybe they mean grocery store. Well, they said fast food, not drive through. Oh yeah, sorry, fast food. So maybe it's just like some quick pickup place, but maybe they just mean like a Safeway. Maybe they mean a Baskin Robbins. Baskin Robbins, I guess, is is fast food. I don't count fast like. When I, I think of fast food, I think of any place that basically sells like fries. I think anywhere. You, I think if you sell, if it sells food, but you don't sit down w with any kind of waitress or anything, then I guess that's probably fast food. Yeah, but like I mean, like grocery I, stores aren't fast food. But you no, but like I think like I think Panda counts as fast food, even though it doesn't have a drive through yeah, or fries. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It, like you walk in and pe sell it over the counter, and Panda is basically, as far as like the process of buying something and and so on, it's like. You could just change the color palette, and it is a Baskin Robbins now. <laughs> like, well, yeah, but I don't count. See, it's, like, it's practically the same counter. My my head doesn't consider Baskin Robbins as being fast food because in my mind, it doesn't sell food, even though yeah. I know ice cream should count as food. Yeah, and cake is even more foodie. I guess so. And they sell cake at Baskin Robbins. So ice cream cake. They also red velvet cake at Baskin Robbins. Sure, but I just mean like it's that it's that vibe. I mean, maybe how about like a Marie Callender's, or like uh, a place that sells pie. I've never been to a Marie Calendar's. <laughs> oh, yeah, Marie Calendar's, you do sit down. I've so only I guess had Marie Calendar products. There are restaurants. Yeah. So but, is, but is that guess, a regular restaurant? Yeah, but like I guess it doesn't count. Factory, I guess. Hypothetically, yeah, so hypothetically, <laughs> you could just walk up to the counter and order a pie or a cake or something, and you don't right. have to sit down and eat, but you can. Like how various diners that have Bear in their name sell cakes and pies at a counter, and you can just buy them You can instead. think of more than one called Black Bear? I think there's other ones, yeah. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. I think you're just thinking of all the black bears. I might be thinking of Black Oak, which is another competitor. Casino? But that, the wrong word is overlapping there. Black Oak Casino? <laughs> no, but... They probably sell pie there. There's just like a there's like a whole category of restaurant that has like a cake counter and a gift shop at the beginning. Like a Cracker Barrel. Before you, get to, before you get to the actual store or the actual restaurant. Anyway, I just, we're, all, we're thrown by Red Velvet. Yeah, we're thrown off by this. Tell us if you know what they're talking about. <laughs> Not really wanting to do more shopping after the incident, Jenna, TJ, and Leo had just bought Peyton fast food as gifts. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, we have a lucha figurine and depressing stuff. Carl doesn't get out to Peyton much, so the three took it upon themselves to buy from three different locations. Oh, wow. <laughs> Leo got a couple large and juicy vegan burgers. TJ got those tofu tacos that are made from nacho cheese chips. Huh. And Jenna got him a bread bowl. Just a, just a bread bowl, nothing in it. <laughs> How well are these things going to, like, refrigerate? <laughs> I don't think Carl's just going to eat them all today. I, I think he might. No. I squint, looking... We've even seen him. He's not, like... He's not, like... Nico Kaido or whatever. Nico no, no. Avocado. No, no, no. But you, but then that, when we first met him, we were at the hotel. They brought food. I remember they were talking about how he ate all of his food in like one sitting. Yeah. Really fast. But he was also showing off. He was fucking with people. And it was just like a couple burgers. It wasn't like four separate it was like, food it was like orders three burgers with or a something, cake. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, I mean. It's such a nightmare amount of food here. Like they're about to mukbang him. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Happy birthday! I squint, trying to look through the frosted glass on the sides of the door. Maybe he's getting high? He should still be able to hear. I mean, maybe he just doesn't want to. TJ holds up his phone. He's not answering his phone, either. Leo knocks on the door hard, his bicep bulging. Uh, oh, I I thought it was gonna. Be, okay, never mind. I read that wrong. I could I could be studying. Chase could be finishing his project, and you and Flynn could be at work right now. Instead, we're doing this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Jenna, <laughs> please. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make this worse than it already Jenna's, is. Jenna's making me so fucking anxious with these with the sniping. Yes. It's like, why did you not just? Why did you just not do this then? Like, everyone had the power to just call it to... Like, we could have just stopped. I, instead, we're, like, just gonna keep sniping this whole time. I agree with Jenna on a lot of things, but I... 
I don't. Her behavior is really bad. Her, um, she does make me anxious because she's one of those people that I think would call you out and would be blunt about something when I think it's better to just kind of like, like kind of bite your tongue on certain things for the vibe, for the vibe of the group. Like she's getting very unhelpfully Flynn-ish right now. Flynn leans back against his truck a couple yards away, briefly canting his head in Jenna's direction as his name is mentioned. You know, I may be remiss to mention this, but you are all six shades extra bitchy today. That's the thing where he always says the thing out loud that he's thinking. Yeah, see, yeah, if Flynn and Jenna both are, would be kind of like that. And That's why they're both got yellow names. <laughs> they're related. Leo stands back, paws on his waist as he takes a deep breath. His eyes have been sheen have a sheened, bleary quality to them. Anytime Jenna speaks, it seems like he's wrought to near twitching levels of anger. All of Leo's plans to bring everyone together have had the opposite effect so far. Do they lock their windows? What? Leo growls. It's not like we're breaking in. That's, it's little, that is like you're breaking in, yes. TJ's ear is pinned back, a frown on his face. The wolf puts a fist to his forehead, closing his eyes. I, I think he's just asleep, and it shouldn't be too hard to just get in there and wake him up. I look over at the side of the house and see a window well. I point at it. What about that? Too small. I could probably fit. She hops off the front porch and crouches down next to the window, pushing at it. Wait, there's a security sticker here. Jenna hesitates, then pushes at the window again, but it doesn't budge. Locked. Then try the one above it. That's too high. I think this is going a little too far. I'll boost you up. Think you're strong enough for that? Well, you look like you've lost weight recently. <laughs> Jenna turns, giving me a quizzical expression. Smooth. She does smile after a moment, looking more bemused than anything. I see her bushy tail flick some behind her. You know, some girls might take that as an insult. Yeah. Are you one of the are you one of said girls? No, I get the meaning of your words, and that's where it's flattering, regardless. Oh, well, good, I guess. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if it's an accident, but I like how there's not even a question mark at the end of the no. sentence. It kind of makes it more funny. <laughs> no. What, what the fuck is happening is a statement. Yeah, it, it means that it ends dead. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> Uh, I set the cake and figure down on the gravel and move behind Jenna, cupping my paws together in front of in front of me for her foot. Why don't you set them on the porch you were just on? Here's your gravel cake. <laughs> <laughs> your rocky road. <laughs> <laughs> Steadying herself with her paws against the wall of the house, Jenna steps into my paws. Slowly I push up, feeling my muscles strain beneath my fur. Fucking hell, this is so fucking stupid. There's a light click, and I see Jenna pushing open the top window with ease. Good. Now, I'm gonna try to boost you all the way up, alright? Your arm's doing okay? Uh, yeah, peachy. Her tail flicks again, and I get a mouthful of fur. <laughs> Sorry. Like we're some kind of cheerleading duo, I shove Jenna as high as I can with both paws. She grabs the ledge, and I feel the weight burden the weight burden lift as she dangles against the side of the house. Careful! Don't fall! Her bush tail is the last thing we see, until she pokes her head back through. Kitchen. I fell in the sink. Upstairs kitchen. Just thinking about that. And then also, <laughs> what if... She's lucky the sink what wasn't full up? of, like... Like plates and glasses yeah. and wine glasses and knives, <laughs> like the horrible thing to fall into. Didn't Leo help her through last time? Yeah, I think? yeah, yeah. But but this but time now, they're, not doing now well. they're fighting. <laughs> okay, unlock the door now. She disappears again, and we make our way back to the front door. 
Leo, why didn't you help? You're the fucking muscle here. Honestly, Flynn, you As probably... Flynn also just yeah, watches? Yeah, Flynn, you're also like a big boy. If you don't shut your fucking mouth, Flynn, I'll use my muscles and kick you right in your vag. Sound good? Jesus, calm your... Leo turns on him, one foot in front of the other. Flynn shuts up. Jeez, man. What a good friend group. What a good birthday. <laughs> Leo is such good boyfriend material. <laughs> Let's draw fan art. <laughs> TJ, meanwhile, has his eyes upon the wall in front of him. Usually he's all smiles when we're gathered together like this, even though this even through all the swearing and crude stuff. Right now, though, his eyes just look sort of vacant, like earlier at the mall. Finally, we hear the door rattling and it opens. It's not good when TJ just has a built-in defense mechanism where he just, like, blanks out what's happening because of how often things just go uncomfortably tense and he just, like, ceases to exist for a while as he just gets through it. I'm imagining the same face that he made when Flynn was yelling at him in that CG. And just, like, he's just, like, staring into space, essentially. Just <laughs> away from him. Called his name, but he didn't answer. Well, he's gotta be here. It's not like he can go anywhere. Or would want to. I pick up my stuff and head inside. Carl's house is as massive and immaculate as I remember it. It is a mansion, after all. Well, maybe less immaculate than I remember. There are a few wrappers and pizza boxes on the marble counter. I assume that's because Carl's parents aren't here to tell him not to be a slob. Flynn immediately heads up the stairs. Yo, Carl! Jenna stands in the kitchen, her paws on her hips as she looks around. Strange being back, isn't it? Like in general, or... She shrugs. Carl? I hear the others scampering around the house, Leo moving out to the backyard. TJ, meanwhile, checks the garage. She pulls out her cell phone, tapping it a few times. It is very faint, but I can hear a distant vibrating sound somewhere in the house. Jenna turns and I follow, stepping past the spacious living room. It's like the most blurry picture of them all. <clears throat> yeah, no, this one's a lot. This one's basically just underwater. Yeah, and I guess this is a different filter. I do remember this one, and it's not cut out, it's just some kind of other... Just another option on the drop-down menu, I guess. I didn't know if it was possible, but it looks like Carl's parents got an even bigger TV since I was last here. It's just he was honestly not that big for even, like, those days. No. It's not, it's not incredible. That, that TV is probably the size of my TV in my room right now, and that TV, like, I've had since, like, I want to say fucking, like, 2006 or something. <laughs> there are a fair number of visuals that just don't really correlate with just what they had on hand. Carl's room looks pretty damn similar to how I remember it. Though, usually, he makes at least a mild effort to pick up after himself when I'd be coming over. It looks fine. Leave him alone. <laughs> I wonder if this is, like, the, the room of anyone that worked on the game. I feel like, like... What a nerd. I feel like most, uh... Like, I'm not trying to generalize your audience, but I feel like most of the cool kids in the audience have rooms with cool collectibles and things in them, and would find this room to be perfectly acceptable by most <laughs> people's standards, although I understand that the picture doesn't match the description. because no. there's nothing dirty about this room, it's just a no. bunch of organized media and, like, one of those, like, bowl chairs? Papasan chairs! Honestly, if I had more room, if we, when, we get, when we get the mansion, I'm gonna get a Papasan chair, because <laughs> they're my favorite kinds of chairs. And I like to make them sit up like dishes and pretend like I'm a bird and go in them and go, <laughs> <"Kaka!"> <laughs> I was just imagining having it having it level and then just putting a dog in it and just like they just roll up in the bowl. Yeah, yeah, because 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 the dish itself is not connected to the base, so yeah. the base just sits there and cradles the dish, and so you can move the dish around. And so when I was like kid i used to do that I'd, like put blankets in there <laughs> and also as an adult i've done this but I, not just about the bird thing but when i was a kid i used to, I used to pretend like i had i had like eggs and i was like guarding them <laughs> and make my mom bring me like fucking cheerios or something. <laughs> <laughs> what i just really don't like this is a me thing i guess but i really it's up there with pop figures i because i hate pop figures but i, I hate also pop figures too. i really hate it when people take 
packaged toys and pin them to the wall. I yeah. do, I hate that entire aesthetic. It's really under. It's like I don't. I guess it's partly because it, it just looks like you live in a store. <laughs> you look like you live in a toy store. Like it's just, it's very not good looking. It's just, and also just seems like even if it is a, a expensive figure or whatever, it's like it just feels like a really trashy thing to pin directly into your wall. Like I don't, I don't like that vibe. Yeah, at all. and then I also I feel kind of sad with the. I'm like I, walls, I, I are, a, walls are for framed art. Well, also it's like I got a, a toy in a box. And no one can ever open it. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of sad sometimes, too. Yeah, I also am already, like, not in favor of toy collecting. It just feels weird. No, I mean, I like, 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 like nice figurines I can get. Yeah. Um, but they have to be nice. Definitely, pop figures, I think, are just, like... Just get little statues. Yeah, ba basically, it's, like... Get like, nice statues of the things you yeah, like. Yeah, nice statues are fine. I like sculptures. Uh, I like things yeah. like that. A little statue thing that just sits there on your, on your shelf is just, like, more aesthetically pleasing than... A packaged articulated figurine that you'll never open but is designed to be played with and has moving limbs that will never move and it looks worse and it's not in a pose well, like and by rules of toy story that toy is suffering <laughs> yeah but it's just like like amiibos and whatnot are all like little dynamic poses and all that and they're like fun to look yeah, at yeah yeah like, an action figure in its box is just like it's not even t-posing it's just like but it is like just a standard like standing straight up hanging out and also a bunch of its parts are probably not attached to it because they're floating next to it in a sea of gross plastic like nothing about nothing about that looks nice also like like amiibos so like really the, are like my, my i just laser focus on that specific detail when i see this picture it's yeah. just those two things those two those two packages which that are you know to the wall, which you know that's what like, those are that there's like, nothing no. else that they could be yeah i hate those specifically I'm like, yay, framed movie posters, a space ghost statue in the top space right. Space ghost, like, coast sure, to coast. Do whatever you want. I don't know what to do with the implication that space ghosts exist in this universe, but... <laughs> yeah. And also there's human beings in those posters. They do all seem to just be humans, yes. Hmm, interesting. It's weird. Uh, the funny thing is that they could have drawn over them really shittily and made them anthro characters and then put the filter over it. Like if they just, if they that just would do, be kind of funny. If they just do it before the filter, then the filter would hide how shittily they they edited the faces to look like anthro characters. Uh, there is so much dirty laundry and trash scattered about. I can hardly see the carpet. Okay, I will say that is gross. That is not what we're seeing, and it's really horrific. God, it smells like Leo's glove box in here. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no! I wonder what smell she's referring to. I wonder why. <laughs> Jenna gives me a slight scrunched up nose look, pauses, then nods acceptingly. I mean, I will say though, you guys can't talk shit because you just broke into this man's house and yeah. you went into his room. Now you're judging it. So. Yeah, Leo said open the. Leo brought you into his car and said open the glove box to set a horrible trap. You just broke into this guy's space. She pulls out her phone, calling Carl's number again. This time the vibration's much closer, a rattling sound as the device vibrates against a wood surface. Still, it sounds kind of muffled. It's in a drawer, probably? It sounds like it's coming from one of his drawers. Yeah. Ordinarily, I'd be vehemently against rifling through one's personal stuff, but this is a special circumstance. At least have Chase do it. They're closer. Yeah. So he can, he'll, he'll have the decency to hide his big, his big dick anime girl figurine. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> His bad dragon. <laughs> His pocket pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> you could have one of those bad dragon themed pocket pussies. <laughs> it's, it's like a, it's like a muzzle of like a dragon or something. Yeah. There's there's one that is a dragon ma mouth, and there's a few other ones. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop you. Maybe you should. Yeah, probably. Jenna starts pulling open drawers in the dresser while I check out the desk. I feel guilty doing it, but there is sort of a thrill to be had in snooping around like this. There's a thrill because it's wrong. <laughs> you guys are doing bad. Yes. I start stumbling upon old comics that I had given Carl myself back when we were kids. The corners dog-eared all to hell. That's nice to see. Whenever you give somebody media and you're like, wow, they used it actually. Yeah, that is actually nice. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, like it's just a really worn comic that was a gift. It's like, oh, well, it's not just like dusty and pristine. Yeah. <laughs> The next drawer looks to be chock full of portable gaming system stuff, including all the, his cartridges just scattered about. I remember every day on the bus I'd sit, ne I'd sit next to Carl just to play, because his parents bought him all the expensive devices. 
I'd always guilt him by saying that he could play at home whenever he wanted, so he usually let me play the whole ride from Echo to Peyton. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. <laughs> it's sweet and also a dick move. Yeah, it is. But it's also like, eh, they were kids. Let them go. Find it yet? I blink, then shake my head, checking the next drawer. No, but... Well, that's a flashlight. <laughs> well, we, we knew that was coming up, so... We literally said it was going to happen. <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of an inevitability. Just think, in another timeline, Chase, you could have been his flashlight. I, uh... like A butthole one, too. Ooh! Uh, oh, oh, so, so there's... Uh, okay, We're okay. further gesturing at the gay shit that can happen. Yeah, it, the door, <laughs> doors are open, you know? Like, like, there's possibilities, okay? The clarification, and also the comic timing of making it a separate page for each sentence. <laughs> I appreciate the, um... It, it builds suspense. <laughs> what kind? Okay, I want the next one to say, like... Uh... Like a specific kind of bow. <laughs> I feel like the next line is going to describe a smell. Oh god, no. What? <laughs> I shut the drawer, trying not to think about it too much. Nothing. Don't smell it, Fox. Well, I found it. I spin around, moving to Jenna's side. It looks like she grabbed it from somewhere wedged between Carl's bed and window. Does it have a lock on it? No, it doesn't. What the fuck, Carl? Carl's parents have always been really good about respecting privacy, yeah? Yeah, but we, we're not, so... No. Nope. <laughs> we're gonna look through his shit. How fortunate for him. Jenna swipes through the messenger tab, though for some reason, now she keeps the screen out of sight from me. <clears throat> Her brow raises at something and she pauses. What? What is it? She quickly shakes her head. Nothing relevant. It was his dick. She returns to tapping about again. I can hear the others still calling for Carl, so I guess they haven't found him yet. Oh, is, he's in the basement. Is it? Wait, so whose phone is this? This is Carl's. This is Carl's phone. It was unlocked? Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I was like, what the fuck, Carl? And they're like, oh, well, what his parents are good at respecting privacy. Who and on the planet doesn't lock the Okay. I can hear the others still calling for Carl, so I guess they haven't found him yet. Again, she is wrought it to pause. Are you gonna tell me tell me what's up this time? She stares. So apparently, Carl took a picture last night. There's a disconcerting look in her eyes, which tells me this is a this is different than just another picture of Carl's ass. Okay. She holds up the phone for me to see. Oh. Hi. Well. What the fuck is that? What the fuck? Uh I mean seeing the code at the bottom makes me wonder if it turns in, if it translates to something huh. like a hex or some shit. That is good. That's a good question. Like weird Easter eggs. It's a huh. uh, Definitely I'm trying to think. Okay, so if I saw this on someone's phone, is it supposed to be, is it potentially the red-eyed thing that Jenna saw? No, Jenna, what Jenna saw was a red thing. Yeah. It had a red face. Hmm. This but, thing's very strange. I'm wondering if I would... I'd be like, hey, did you go to like a, a rock concert last night or something? <laughs> like, did you go to a theme park? The fact that she blew past the first picture makes me wonder if that one was just his dick. <laughs> well, it's in a, just in a picture of Carl's ass, which I think it might just be a picture of Carl's Maybe. ass. Maybe. Like, he's just, he's just known uh, for taking pictures of his ass. What the fuck? What's up, Carl? I stare at the sunlight reflecting upon the ceiling above me. Is, is Carl missing in this route? It's pale. Its pale golden hue has gradually shifted to a more amber tone as dusk nears. Uh-huh. We showed up around, what, two-ish? Yeah. Usually I'd be at work, but I took time off for Leo's party plan. The patter of Flynn's feet is audible behind me as he paces back and forth upon the tile floor. Is he calling a friend or the police? I don't think, I think he's just complaining. It, it oh, sounds no, like he's on the phone. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. on the phone. Glancing over the edge of the couch, his voice is, his gaze is fixed upon the ground in front of him, the phone cupped against the side of his head. 
Yeah, it's just it's just a kind of explaining that you only do when you're like on the phone with someone when you're explaining those weird details. What? Mm-hmm. He's in the kitchen now, using your coffee machine. All the old gang is here. To repeat, the alarm wasn't armed. Carl usually doesn't set it. We got in through the top window above the kitchen sink. Flynn points towards the aforementioned window, despite currently explaining to it on the phone. Leo stands motionless in front of the kitchen window, facing away from us. Well, Jenna did. Then unlocked the front door for the rest of us. Wasn't my idea, again. He's talking to Carl's parents, I think. Place is kind of messy, but we didn't see any signs of anything broken into. Or we're, we're, probably, yeah, we're probably calling the parents to ask, explaining that Carl's not here. Yeah. Jewelry above the bedroom dresser? Give me a sec, I'll check. Speaking of, here she is. Flynn hands the phone off to Jenna before heading upstairs again. She uncrosses her legs and stands up slightly, pausing for a moment as she listens to Carl's father on the other end of the line. Yes, Mr. Hendricks. It has been a while since we've last spoken. Over six years, actually. I go by Jenna now. Yes. This is the first hint in this game about the name change. Yeah, I'm glad they actually addressed it. I thought that was just going to be a yeah. thing. That, that it, was it was Jasmine, it was, right? And like it, it a was, strangely it, spelled Jasmine? Yeah, it was Jasmine. Yeah. We're still wondering about that. <clears throat> Instead of pacing about like Flynn, she moves over toward me. She rests herself against the arm of the crouch by the by my head. Her expression shifts some, but I can't see much due to the sun glare coming through the windows and the angle she is above me. My brother? Actually, yes. When I went through his phone, it showed that he had texted earlier that... D yes, it does appear Carl was buying weed from him. Hmm... From uh, what's his Jenna's name again? brother. Um, yeah. Fuck it. it. Yeah, not Adam, but Jeremy. the other one, Jeremy. She's quiet now, listening. All the J names in that family. She even changed her name, and it's still a J name. Yeah, you think she's? I think she's yeah. trying to separate. But if I was given no other context up until now, hearing the, if I just if that was my first hint that she changed her name, I'm just. I'm just like programmed at this point to to take that as a signal that she's trans. Yeah, but it doesn't work. But her old name was Jasmine, so I'm like, wait, <laughs> like I I know more because I know I know we know her from when she was named Jasmine, so we're like, no, that's not that doesn't seem to be what's up. Well, I also. But if I if you only give me the context, oh yeah, I go by Jenna now, and that's all you hear. I would think that she was a trans woman. I my association goes with um people who change their name because of trauma. Yeah. Just to escape. Or, or it's like, or if you're named after someone, but you hate them. Or she just hates her parents so much. Like, um, like my cousin's name is Matthew and he refuses to go by Matt because his dad was like a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like one of those things where you kind of like, or you go by your middle name because like you are named after someone that you don't like or something like that. But you, it's more unusual for girls to be named after a woman in the family. Cause usually, it usually would be like your middle name or something. Mm -hmm. But boys, it's always like first name, which I always think is kind of. It's kind of a cop out. <laughs> just give them their own name. It's just yeah. It's it's being named after anything is kind of a, a weird concept. But being named after your previous parent is just like okay. So I'm just your legacy. Like that's just a weird thing to telegraph. I'm named after CB Nix, and she doesn't even know. <laughs> a lot of people probably are. I know. I also knew someone. It's funny because I also I had a friend named after Carly Simon, which is funny because they're both like singers from the same kind of time period so it just was a weird yeah. coincidence but um yeah but yeah she'll she'll never know how sad she's quiet now listening i can hear carl's father on the other end now meaning his voice is a bit raised i turn on my side propping my head up with an elbow on the armrest and attempt to read her expression jenna doesn't appear phased he doesn't look at me either Mr. Hendricks. The voice in the other end continues. The high-pitched rasp of Carl's father's voice is still audible a minute later. There are pauses in what, she's, in what he's saying, but Jenna doesn't inter interject. Finally, there is a pause of around five seconds before I hear a quieter, Are you still there? Coming through. Yes, Mr. Hendricks. At this time, 
I'm going to file a missing persons report with the county sheriff's office, citing the image I sent you from Carl's phone. Looking over, Carl's phone sits on the coffee table, the red-eyed image still displayed. Something about it seems so familiar, yet exactly why escapes me, like fleeting deja vu. It makes me uneasy, even without the context of our current situation, which makes it worse. It hasn't been the minimum 24 hours, but as you said, the fact that his phone, wallet, and all of your other vehicles are accounted for is worrisome. She waits, listening. I'm going to tell the police that we were given the go-ahead to come and to come and go from the building during the week. If you could confirm that that when the sheriff, sheriff <laughs> if you could confirm that when the sheriff's office calls you later, that'd make things easier on us while we keep up the search effort. Do you, Miss, Mrs. Hendricks, have any recommendations on that front regarding where he could have gone off to? She reaches over, and I feel her paw move beneath my tufted chin. Her fingers scratch along my jawline, and my eyes begin to lull. I don't know why I'm so tired. Mm hmm I look up at her, though her gaze still doesn't meet mine. She continues to pet me, eventually reaching up to ruffle my head scruff. It rouses me from my lulled state, and I blink up at her. She covers the phone with her free paw, muttering to me. Hey, wake up. Can you go see if TJ made any progress upstairs? Oh, yeah, sure thing. Oh no, they're both upstairs. TJ and Flynn. Oh, Hearing no. the telltale thuds of Flynn's heavy-footed gait upon the, the terracotta stairway, I glance up. I don't think Flynn would fuck with TJ right now. It seems like a bad time. He returns, shaking his head. Shit's still there. Jenna nods, seeming to ignore the now strange look the Gila is giving us. Yeah, so he, he is a Gila. Was that the creature that was named before? Yeah, the Gila, a Gila monster. So he is the specific... Yeah, because we were... Talking later about that, the... Later that conversation, it was confirmed that Flynn was gay. I guess it makes sense. He's like so he's black one, and orange, so I guess. He's, so he's like the one guy that's on Grinder in all of Echo. It's just the... It's like, just Flynn. <laughs> when, when I draw like a... Like, I'm being dumb. I know it doesn't really matter. But I guess he is black and orange. I mean, obviously, the little feathers on his head don't make sense. But they wouldn't make sense for, like, any l lizard living today. But, like, when I draw, like, a, if I were to draw a Gila monster, it would be, like, a really wide head with, like, a little, very rounded little yeah. snout. It they wouldn't give, be, like, it wouldn't him, be the elongated. stripes instead of the giant splotches. And also, he, like, uh, he looks more like a raptor. He's got, like, the longer face, you know? Like, he, like Gila monsters have a little fat... <laughs> little fat short, yeah. short they look, faces. They look like salamanders, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just being picky because I like I'm, I'm a reptile person. I think Mr. Hendricks is giving us some advice on where to look. Jenna again nods in confirmation, though Flynn still peers at us with a furrowed brow. Were this any other time, I'd have some shit to say right now. He no he sighs, nostrils flaring. What, do you have reason to be mad about this coupling too? Just like with with uh, Leo? I imagine Fl that Jenna's not as bad as Leo. <laughs> is that is that what he's talking about? I, like, I'm, I'm confused about what he says when he's like, is I he, have shit to say right now. Well, he keeps reacting to us interacting. Like before, uh, it was when we had the line about her losing weight. And he's like, what is happening right now? I just and, thought he was getting he, impatient with us taking so long. No, and here she was like petting us, and then we were like laying down like next to her. Mm -hmm. And so like there's like he can tell from us recovering from the pose like what kind of like vibe there was when he was walking in, and he's like, "The fuck." <laughs> I lean forward, taking hold of Carl's phone and peering at the image again up close. I'm gonna check on some of his messages myself and see if I can find anything. Concerning. Hi. Asshole. <laughs> it's him. They don't fucking understand what this means. <laughs> Look, uh... Oh my god, Leo's portrait is the, his one of one of the old arts. Oh, it's that guy! I, sh I showed you that specific sprite once when I was looking through his, the old sprites. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh... Th that artist actually is really... He has really good art. Or they, or I don't know. But, uh... I, I actually, I actually already knew and liked that artist, and was shocked that they, they did an iteration of of uh, of Echo sprites that are just not in the game anymore. Like, there's just so many iterations that that even though the fact that like Route 65 uses the old ones, there are so many other old ah. 
Damn no. it. I wanted to comment on the other. Yeah, one. fuck you. <laughs> I have superpowers. I was going to comment on the last Some one. Some gay otter, IDK. Did you change Did you... my name in your phone? <laughs> that was us. the best one, yeah. Jeremy, we have more at the end of April. So send me. Say about the weed. Mom, is this sort of prank, Carl? I swear to God. This was for five minutes ago, so she's getting worried. Unlock the exclusives DLC Super Wolf versus. We got a f- that's really funny that we're looking at this big complicated screen of information that we want to snoop on and then fucking Flynn is like lo- like mad at us for looking through his phone. Some gay otter ID. <laughs> that's really funny. The way that he names people. Leo. Uh, he then names Flynn asshole even though they're definitely friends, but that's just their mess. <laughs> like did, did uh, you change my name in your phone <laughs> leo uh leo's was like where are you so he, was, he sent them the same text that he sent everybody else when we were yeah. out hiking so like he was getting mad at everybody including carl at that time yeah the cell phone is plucked from my grasp flynn standing above me jenna and i already looked through that now you're just wasting time being a snoopy shit Stop looking at my previous art style. <laughs> One of them said, like, we don't... Because Flynn said, like, they don't understand what this... It was something like they don't even understand what yeah. this means or something. So he, I think I think he took the phone because I think that message, not that we'll ever really see it, uh, was talking about the rest of us. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder like, what I think we're, specifically he was saying. I think we are they in that yeah. circumstance. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. definitely the rest of the group. Uh, cause Flynn's got shit to work out, but also like, if you looked at that sprite, his old face used to look like a Gila monster. I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out that picture. I look thought his, it was. Look at his fat little face. Oh. Yeah. yeah okay. He used to look completely different cause that's the, I think that's the same artist that drew that Leo also. Uh, that's just what they looked like in the previous art style. One of the one of the now vestigial versions that no longer is in the game, but might have. For all I know, they might have looked like that when this part was being made. I think it's just like I a fun know. throwback. I okay, so I couldn't discern that image from my angle. I thought yeah. that that was like, for some reason, to me, it looked like a like that like Borderlands mask on the front of the game. What? Oh, it looked like someone Weird. wearing. It looked someone the wearing psychos. a mask. Yeah, yeah, I got confused. The uh, I think this Flynn might. I because I've heard people describe pe- people talk about the sprites not matching the descriptions and Flynn is described as being the worst one of not matching, but also the sprite looks really good. <laughs> yeah, the, even if it doesn't match the in-game this description, this sprite looks better than the other one. I prefer it. But it, yeah, it seems to there's there's variances constantly, and you just kind of just go with it eventually. I could I could feel things for Flynn if he wasn't such an asshole. Yeah, the fact that he intentionally unbuttons a shirt that has that many buttons all the time is very funny to me. Yeah, like five buttons <laughs> yes. worth of buttons. He has to unbutton so many buttons to get it to be in that state. It's like ah, oh, so effortlessly. I just look like this all the time. All well, all those ones are the hardest buttons to button. So the hardest button to button. button. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh, I knew Keith would get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, Jenna nods in agreement, then motions the stairs. We got this, Chase. Like I said, go see how TJ's progress is going. She looks to Flynn with a sort of stern, knowing expression before responding to something on the phone. Such a mom. Like, she's very, like, she's, um, sheep herding the situation in terms of, like, our placement within it, which is... Yeah. Probably for her own good, because it makes me think that her and Flynn know something about what they found in the phone that neither one of them wants to reveal to the rest of the group. Maybe out of kindness for Carl, or something like that. Or maybe out of kindness for Flynn, what his conversation was about with Carl. I, I feel like I feel like they know something that we don't about the phone, and so we're just, I, Jenna's trying to be... Um, she's trying to guide the situation in a good way. <laughs> but also, the way she was talking on the phone was very, like... It was very professional. It reminded me of being at work. It's how I talk on the phone at work, where I'm just like... yeah very like formal language well articulated uh very inoffensive and uh efficient well the convenience store is a few miles from here does he usually walk that far my cheeks burn at the scolding and i rise to a stand turning to leave i can see that Le- i can see leo standing unmoving in the kitchen He's like a photograph, a still image silhouetted in contrast to the fading sun through the window. He's defeated as literally every element of today has not worked. 
It's weird. Usually Leo's the one that jumps into action in this sort of situation. Or at least, he did when we were kids. De facto group leader and whatnot. Now, though, since we found out Carl was missing a couple hours ago, he's been pretty resigned. Hell, Flynn and Jenna have been the ones coordinating everything so far. He glances over his shoulder. The first bit of movement I've seen him do in about 15 minutes. I can see his red eyes from here. He's staring right at me. I find myself walking over, despite myself. Flynn and Jenna busy talking with Mr. Hendricks over the speakerphone now. I enter the kitchen and approach him. Hey. Yo. A silence lingers between us. So, Carl. Yeah. You know where he might be? Uh-huh. Of course. I'm just not telling anybody, because I like all this quality time we're having here, eh? Leo, this is serious. Jenna's about to call the sheriff. Yeah? Good. Two birds, birds with one stone. He holds up his phone. A notification on the screen I can't quite read. Got a call from Mariana back at my parents' house. The police were checking to see if I was there. What? My brow raises. I try to study Leo's expression, but he's stony as all hell right now. His jaw set in, set in near constant grit. Family Plex got my plates from the security camera things in the parking lot, I'm guessing. I sigh, rubbing my forehead. I'm about to open my mouth and say something, though I catch a sort of strange, empty look in Leo's eyes that brings me to pause. I decide against my, spo my scolding and instead move beside, beside him, taking one of Carl's mugs and pouring myself a cup of coffee from the coffee maker. It's one of those fancy ones that has an espresso marker, maker built in and a basket next to the machine with at least 30 different flavored cups. The flavors are mostly dessert-based, with labels like salt and caramel, frosted oatmeal cookie, cinnamon churro, and truffle sundae. They sound pretty damn delicious, as far as I know. Carl only, li uh, as far as I know, Carl only drinks energy drinks and usually obscene quantities of them. After taking a sip, the bitter, the bitter scald hits my tongue, and I find myself reflexively reeling before getting a chance to swallow. Despite having all these choices available, it looks like Leo went for straight black. Leo's gaze shifts back to me, and I see him perk a white brow. Damn fine cup of coffee, eh, Chula? I manage to swallow without sputtering too much, putting on a slight artsy flair to my tone. Black as a moonless eve at midnight, just how I like it. He smiles, though it's visib a visibly pained expression, which he obscures behind his own cup as he drinks. I bet at university all you drink are those rainbow frappuccinos I saw in the news. What's a rainbow frappuccino? I I, don't, I think he's just talking about like how all the, the frappuccinos are co come in like a bunch of different colors and they're pretty. I don't think he's talking about a specific one that is rainbow. I think he's yeah, talking about like, like like are you complaining there, there's, about there's pink, are you pink complaining about like Pride Month? And pride month whipped cream or something like i don't think they have that <laughs> maybe i could be someone in the comments is like well actually, oh, actually. At, at one time they had the rainbow unicorn drink or something but like they have like i just know they have like pink ones and green ones and brown ones of different weird shades one of my coworkers gets one that's like some fucking gross looking one that's like green and brown i'm like oh it looks awful mm -hmm. it's like a chai frappuccino coffee mix thing mm. i think it's some custom thing she asks for i like chai but i wouldn't want to mix it with things it's i don't know they're all they're all just like you know hoity toity and they have little colorful sprinkles on top and are cute <laughs> i think he's just making fun of us i remember when those came out my dorm was by the library and the coffee shop and there was selling them the line was insane, and they sold out super quick. Maybe they are rainbow frappuccinos. You sell out of coffee? But also, your, your coffee happens. shop at your college can sell licensed frappuccinos, because those are like, you can't... Are frappuccinos licensed? You, you can't sell them if you're not Starbucks. 
It's a co- it's a trademarked word. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, no, fra- no, they made up frappuccinos. Oh, huh. I've never thought about that or recognized that pattern. I guess weird. But apparently they're talking about something specific. But I also always forget what a frap is. <laughs> Like, I never remember what it is. Well, it, like, uh, as a concept. This one says they use frap syrup. I have no clue what the fuck that means. Yeah, and I'm extremely unclear on what frap actually I kinda, is I kinda, in general. I'll look this up. My friend, Vincent, he's a barista there. He tells me it's just mango juice, sprinkles, whipped cream, frap syrup, and food coloring. Mango? Um, I don't want mango in a coffee. I don't know if there's actually coffee in that. A lot of frappuccinos some don't have to have coffee in them. What? Yeah, I'm blowing Keith's mind today. Why no, you you can get them? you can get a vanilla bean frappuccino, and it's basically just a milkshake, no coffee. Yeah, frappuccino is a Starbucks own what? word. I don't like any of this. They were introduced 27 years ago. Oh, I feel old yet? <laughs> I'm older. Ha ha! I win. Oh wait, <laughs> no. I look up if there's a rainbow frappuccino. Like if that was a real thing. Oh, and that same Vincent from all those photos you've been uploading recently? Oh, you yeah. shut the fuck up. Can the get, other wolf guy? Can you get off uh, it for a minute? We, a friend is missing right now. It's not the fucking time. Uh, oh, yeah. Fra- okay, it is a thing. I can see where this is going from a mile away. Um. So, I'm going to show... There's a picture of the rainbow frappuccino. Oh. That's, that was apparently it's got a real a rainbow thing. rainbow to it. Um, that looks bad. Red, blue, and or yellow I want tie-dye Starbucks. swirls topped with vanilla whipped cream and dusted with red, blue, and yellow powder. That doesn't sound edible. <laughs> <laughs> I take another drink of my coffee, despite the bitterness. I wonder if it's dated. I wonder if this is specific. If it specifically date, dates back to an era where this game happened, because it's a period piece and this matches up with the porn timeline. Maybe. I mean, they actually do have specific. Um, like time like they, they have like um limited edition frappuccino flavors <laughs> i mean the pictures uh, they just pop up on my timeline yeah i keep seeing them pop up i'm definitely not looking on your profile and scrolling for several hours every day and punching the wall because of fucking vincent fuck you vincent was it vincent I yeah that's vincent <laughs> yeah like now we know like vincent's the reason probably why he punched those holes in his wall i bet he's seeing another wolf guy and chases pictures i mean or and then he, he sits just was, there and looks up a bunch of otter wolf porn to, 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 and cranks one out after he punched the wall. I thought the punching the wall was a part of the watching the porn. Like he was just like, <laughs> like it, it, like it adds for some reason. Like <laughs> he's he's too excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's too much. Yeah, same guy. Ah, I hear you. There's a pause, and I change the topic. Are you going to turn yourself in to the sheriff? Not yet. He responds quickly. Got to find Carl. And I think a wolf who's known the horned fucker his whole life could sniff him out better than any some overpaid mall cop, eh? There'll be more trouble for you if, if Sheriff Malco, assuming that's who's in charge, finds you first. <laughs> the guy's name is actually, like... Overpaid mall cop, and the the sheriff's name is Malco, which, which sounds like mall yeah, cop. Yeah, for a second there, I, I, saw, I second guessed that he was saying mall cop. I thought he was. I thought he was trying to stop himself from just saying mall cop. Yeah, but there's a U, which raises new questions. <laughs> maybe they, maybe they make fun of him and call him mall cop because of his name. Yeah, I think it's, I think it might be the joke. Leo sighs with a frustrated, gravelly rasp, his gaze flicking down to the kitchen floor. You sound like Jenna. It's probably because what I'm saying makes sense. <laughs> the wolf looks up, his bug-eyed gaze focused upon me as if he were searching for something. This damn get-together has, got, has gone more badly than I could have ever predicted, you know? I nod, not disagreeing with that sentiment in the slightest. First Flynn at the river, then that shit at the family plex, and now Carl's nowhere to be found. It's maybe the worst shit yet. This may, this may all be the worst shit, yeah. But I wouldn't ever be able to forgive myself if I gave up my last chance I had to ever spend time with you guys again, you know? He sets his coffee down, his paws gripping the back of the countertop. Leo, come on, we'll see each other again. 
You don't know that. Jenna's moving all the way to the East Coast. TJ out to the country, probably, and you... After what happened at the family, Plex, you probably don't want to see me ever again either, eh? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. There's a serious intensity in the cadence of his voice, as if something is practically choking him as he speaks these last few words. The air feels... the air even feels weird. I think for a moment about what to say, still processing Leo's response. Looking around, I spot an old black beanie hanging up on the coat rack by the door, and I remember something. Carl once told me something back when I said you were becoming too cool for us in high school, with football and stuff. You know, back when you stopped riding the bus and just spent all your time after school at practice with the jock kids? He said, after all the shit that we've been through, none of the, none of the present petty drama stuff matters, yeah? I mean, sure, I'm kind of skeeved, but it doesn't mean I hate you forever. Just hate me temporarily, then. I sigh. You still haven't even said sorry or anything, man. Why would I say sorry when it's fucking Jenna who showed up and ruined everything, yeah? Oh, boy. You read that all oh, wrong, Leo. Oh, no. That's how, how, that's how that's you, how read you that. interpreted that situation. You, Did he not hear us? His takeaway. No, we yelled. Yeah. So like his takeaway isn't that we told him to fuck off and that he's crossing boundaries and that he fucked up. His takeaway is that Jenna witnessed anything. That Jenna and TJ showed up and witnessed what happened and Jenna was being snipey because of the his behavior. That's his takeaway, and not that he was being a weird rapey fucker. So, so does that mean that if, if, if they weren't there and saw it, he would just he would have not listened to us saying no to him? It's worrying that he doesn't see it as a boundary cross. That he he doesn't even think that he did the thing wrong. Like he's mad at other people for, for what happened for interrupting when the, he the weird did everything rapey stuff he was doing to us. That's wild. How dare they interrupt me when I'm trying to molest this you? Is not where I thought they were going with Leo. People still love him. <laughs> Are you serious? I told you to fuck off too. Why? <laughs> Why? Jesus Christ, man. You were grinding on me 15 feet away from a fucking kitty corner. You, you used to do that sort of horny stuff to me all the time. Now you're different. We're not fucking dating anymore. He's like, college changed you. The liberals got you. The liberals made you not love me it's anymore. It's like, we're not together, Leo. <laughs> That's what's different. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He gesticulates with a swirling motion towards me using both of his paws. Well, I guess I am. That's sort of the point about why it's fucked up. Leo blinks, his shoulders raised high. He begins to speak faster and with more of his old accent seeping through. You didn't even tell me you was uncomfy or nothing. Just told me straight up to fuck off. It felt appropriate at the time, man. This is why I didn't want you to leave Echo Otter. It isn't like things were great here between you and me and I before I left, either. Because Jenna got to you. You blaming that on Jenna, too? Oh, because she left? No, I think he should. I she think made her he, declaration on the rock that she was leaving. Is that the corruption that he thinks happened? I just think he's. I just think he's willing to blame any of his personal faults on anyone else besides himself. What are you talking about? We had it all planned out: a house, a car, a job waiting for you at my dad's shop. The life we talked about since we were little. Then Jenna started talking to you all about Pueblo and how you should go. To hell with all us hick trash. We're better than them, yeah? I, I, I want to point out really quick. This is the only playthrough, I think, where they've ever said where they... Like, Pueblo. Pueblo. They've been saying Pueblo all the time in this playthrough. And then yeah. they're the ones they don't mention it. They might have mentioned it They in say like, college and stuff. I feel like they might have mentioned it in, like, literally the intro. But I don't, I don't remember them ever much. saying the name, even. We haven't talked about college much but i feel like they might have brought it up in like literally like the first episode basically they talk about college all the time yeah. like college comes up a lot but 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 the name of the college in this playthrough seems like particularly prevalent 
Pueblo. Prevalent. <laughs> Sorry. Pueblant. <laughs> Pueblant. <laughs> Leo. And then she came up with that fucking prank. I see his fists shake and instantly know what he's talking about. You broke my phone. You broke my heart, Pochica. For fuck's sake, shut up. What is the... Okay, I want to know what the prank is. Here we fucking go. All right. <laughs> this is escalating again. Wait, 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 really quick. He broke his phone. Remember earlier we had that weird dream vision with yes. the broken phone? There was some prank that resulted in Leo getting so mad that he broke our phone. It's... Do you think we were like? Do you think we made a fake profile of someone pretending to hit on Chase? It, oh my gosh! What if that did happen? And Leo saw it on the phone and then broke it. Maybe. Jared, yeah, maybe Jared, Jared. was. Uh, Whatever happened with Jared? Like it's like a nightmare for Chase now. Maybe, maybe Jenna thought it'd be funny to maybe. maybe I there don't was know a if... really big guy and a fox in the background, which could have been Leo and Jenna. Yeah. Maybe even old sprites, like one of the forgotten ones. Maybe, but I'm thinking. Hmm. I'm. Th I don't. Okay, so I will say, if that did happen, if Chase was in on it with Jenna, as a joke, to tease Leo, that that's funny. But he probably took it very angrily and broke Chase's phone, and maybe got even violent about it, which might be something that scares Chase to think about. If Jenna didn't tell Chase, that's pretty fucked up, because what if Chase really thought some person was creeping on him and. I don't know. I just feel like that could be fucking weird. We don't have we don't have a lot of context for that one yet. We don't, but I have I have some. I I think that that's related to what we're talking about. Flynn steps into the kitchen, and I realize I can still hear the faint sound of Jenna on the phone with Mister Hendricks in the other room. While you two fuckers are having a domestic, Carl's probably getting reamed by the Mothman. <laughs> 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 Holy shit. What a visual. I look forward to Flynn's route because he's very entertaining, despite he, the nightmare that he can be. Yes. And we, he's, he's the least used character so far in the other routes. Or whatever the fuck that red-eyed shit is on his phone. <laughs> Leo steps forward, his jowls curled back into a snarl. Get out of here, Flynn. Surprisingly, Flynn holds his ground. The lizard squeezes his fists against his chest and stomach as Leo approaches, reflexively defending himself in case swung upon. We don't have time for this shit. Leo stares hard at him, his shoulders raised and his fur bristling. Flynn flinches some. It reminds me of how Leo acted towards him at the river, and I'm starting to wonder if this is how Leo treats Flynn when we're not here. Leo, what the hell are you doing? Calm down, all right? I'm still fuming from what Leo said, but even I know this this bickering is petty in contrast to the problem at hand. A solid ten seconds of silence pass, neither of the two tall figures budging an inch. Cool. Finally, Leo steps forward, shoulder-checking Flynn hard enough that he stumbles back against the wall. Gonna find Carl myself. Flynn sputters angrily, Leo muttering some string of swears as he heads towards the door. At least tell me where you're gonna look so we know where not to go. Leo pauses, his hand on the door handle. Danica Street to Elizabeth Road, south to north. Great, good luck. <laughs> the door slams behind me, and the heavy stomps of his feet of gravel outside. He's gone. I look down and realize that I'm shaking. Even if it had been years, an argument like that with someone who basically defined my childhood and teenage years has a way of hurting deep. That stupid fucking prank. I try to refocus, making my way over to the knocked over Flynn and offering him my paw. You okay, man? He glares up at me for a second, then takes my grasp and pulls himself up. The lizard weighs a ton, though, nearly pulling me down with him. Just go help TJ already. I'm gonna check the basement again. He dusts off his front and begins fiddling with his shirt collar, walking off back towards the stairwell before I can respond. 
Through the window, I can see Leo outside. He's, he's down the road a ways, past his van. He's talking to someone. I see the figure he's talking to point toward the house we're in, and Leo crosses his arms. It can't be the sheriff already, can it? Moving to the window to, a, to get a closer look, I can see that the figure is a weasel. Hmm. It's Duke. 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 Jesus, I haven't seen him in years. I guess we're still not helping TJ. <laughs> I, yeah, I forgot, I forgot about poor TJ. He's done like four other things. I used to see him around on his porch a lot back when I used to visit, when I visited Leo's place near daily. As far as I remember, he was the loner type, occasionally getting involved with civic stuff and the mayor. I have a vague memory of him being married to a younger lady when I was a kid, but I don't remember seeing her after first grade. Well, we know what happened to her. Yep. His interactions with me are always pretty brief. Not, not, uh, not much to judge a personality by. Now, though, he's pointing at the house, speaking loudly, though I can't discern what he's saying. Leo just looks angrier, his tail stiff. Despite the range, I can practically feel the old fellow's gaze shifting, meeting mine through the window. His pointing hand shifts, now I'm directly at me. I reflexively blink, stepping back. When my eyes refocus, there's a plume of dust in the air. Duke is on his back in the middle of the dirt road, and Leo is quickly marching back towards his van. What the hell? Duke's already back on his feet, sprinting now away from Carl's house. His mouth is still moving. He's saying something. How do you see that if he's sprinting away? <laughs> yeah, good point. Leo's van peels out of the driveway, gravel kicking up in its wake. Within a few seconds, he's out of sight as well. Jesus. I walk over the door, locking it once again just to be safe. Good idea. Left alone, I head out of the kitchen. About fucking time. <laughs> what a fucking night. Okay, so Flynn's still after us on this timeline. But fucking Leo took him out because he's had like, th he's had like the last like six hours of pent up anger. And and Duke, I think, still, still has been seeing us around. Yeah, he's probably coming. He's probably specifically hunting us for the same reason. The question is whether he comes up again in this timeline. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. A lot of things juggling. All right. Mm -hmm.